Welcome to Movies with McLean. I'm Andrew McLean, and this is the weekly podcast where we talk all things movies, including the latest in movie news. Today, our topic is spoof movies. Uh, the opening music today comes from the movie Airplane, and we're talking spoof movies because Airplane is going to Blu-ray. Uh, it's going to be a shorter show today, uh, just being myself on the show, but we do have a lot to talk about. Um, so, our first segment it being the last episode of the month is the Netflix Rundown, where we discuss all of the movies that are leaving Netflix in the month of May. And there's only one major release, or one major film that's leaving uh, Netflix in May, and that is Jurassic Park. Now, we talk about Jurassic Park a lot on here, and it actually was just put on Netflix, I believe, in March. So, it's a shame to see it go uh, this, uh, this soon, and... Really, the main reason we do this segment is just to keep the viewers informed as to what's about to leave. So, if you want to watch Jurassic Park anytime soon, you have about five days to watch it. So, uh, you better watch it this weekend or sometime soon if you want to watch Jurassic Park. I'm not going to talk too much more because we do talk about it very frequently on here. So, now we're going to get into the movie news. And there is a lot of movie news this week. Uh, we had... A lot of release dates, trailers, um, so the first piece of news is that Fox has released their slate of uh, films in the X-Men universe that are going to be coming out next year. So we have New Mutants will be released on April 13th, 2018, Deadpool 2 on June 1st of next year, and X-Men Dark Phoenix, uh, that's an official title they've just announced um, for the first time. And that'll be released on November 2nd, 2018. So, um, first I'll talk about New Mutants. Uh, this is a film we don't really know too much about, but actually it's coming out in less than a year now. Uh, so I'm a little surprised to see them uh, releasing that ahead of Deadpool 2. But um, it's directed by Josh Boone, who I don't think I've seen anything of his. I know he directed The Fault in Our Stars. Uh, but... I w I'm really interested to see uh, New Mutants and how it ties into the rest of the X-Men universe. Um, we don't know a timeline really, so it could take place uh, present day or it could take place in the same time as the, uh, the current X-Men films they're making back in the 80s um, around the time of Apocalypse. So I, it is going to be, um, I think, a breath of fresh air to see an entirely new uh, cast of, of mutants. Um, my favorite X-Men movie is still um, X-Men First Class, which introduced us to a whole new cast of uh, X-Men. So I am uh, very excited to see what they do with New Mutants, and um, you know, only come only a, m a year away, so we should expect to see some images in the next few months, and then you know, maybe around Comic Con we see a new trailer. So definitely excited for New Mutants, uh, something new in the X-Men universe. Um, and then Deadpool 2, obviously, uh, I'm very excited for. It's got, it's been uh, pushed to summer, so we were thinking maybe it was going to be released February of next year, but it looks like they're going for that prime summer release date, trying to make the most money out of this as they can. Uh, it is going to come out, I think, around the same time as the Han Solo movie, so um, Han Solo will probably have the box office title for a few weeks until Deadpool 2 comes out, then Deadpool should take that. Um, you know, I understand why it's um, been moved forward a little bit with them finding a new director and everything, but I think that uh, this movie is moving forward, and uh, again, we should expect to see some images uh, later this year, and if it's anything like the first Deadpool film, uh, it can only be, only be uh, entertaining, so I can't wait for Deadpool 2. And then the last film... X-Men Dark Phoenix, uh, this is interesting, you know, Apocalypse wasn't the best X-Men movie, it was, uh, it was something that I enjoyed parts of, but there was a lot that I didn't like, but one of the things that I did really like was the new young cast of X-Men, I think that Sophie Turner is, uh, an incredible actress on Game of Thrones, and she did a good job as Jean Grey in, uh, Apocalypse, so, I'm excited to see them take another stab at this Dark Phoenix storyline. Uh, we did, uh, obviously, we did see them get it wrong with X-Men The Last Stand, and that was directed by Brett Ratner, who's gone now, but we're also not going to get Brian Singer for this film either, because he said 
he's done directing the X-Men movies for a while, so it looks like Simon Kinberg is going to come in and direct, and as far as I know, he hasn't directed anything yet, just been a writer on all these uh, Fox comic book movies. So we could see, um, you know, uh, Fox taking a bit of a risk with a first-time director, but, um, you know, I think Kinberg knows the X-Men universe, and I think that they have a good solid young cast of X-Men uh, to, to tackle this Dark Phoenix story. And if they're doing the Dark Phoenix um, story, you'd think that they have to bring back James McAvoy as, um, as Professor X. I don't know if they'll bring back Fassbender or um, Jennifer Lawrence. In fact, I hope they don't bring back Jennifer Lawrence because I think that she's, t she's tired in these movies. She doesn't care, so... I don't need to see any more of her as Mystique, but um, I am excited to see where they go with this. I I do think that it could turn out uh, it could turn out good, or it also could be another disappointment. So hopefully, Dark Phoenix is good. But it's great to see that Fox is diversifying their uh, their X Men lineup. We have all these different um, movies that could be tied together somehow, or just loosely tied together. Um, so it's great to see them building really a cinematic universe as Marvel and DC are doing instead of just consecutive films. Um, I'm very excited to see all these X-Men movies and um, next one we'll get will be in about a year. Uh, and then Fox did also release uh, the, the dates for the Avatar sequels, but since those are so far away, we're not going to talk about that because if you ask me, it's likely to change again. Uh, but we are going to talk about the trailer for Kingsman The Golden Circle. Uh, this was the first trailer released for the new Kingsman movie. And I thought that it was a, it was a very good trailer. Not, um, not anything great that um, made me think that this movie is going to be you know, so much better than the first one. But uh, just reaffirmed um, my beliefs that this is going to be um, a worthy sequel. And I think that it, it did what all sequels uh, need to do, or at least this, the trailer made me think that it's going to do what all sequels need to do, and that's build upon the lore of the first film, expand it, and um, also capture the essence of what the first film was. So I think that we're going to see um, a lot of new stuff with the Statesman. I really liked uh, the look of Channing Tatum. I think he's going to be a great addition uh, to this cast as the American counterpart to um, Eggsy. Um, and then, you know, they had that tease at the end with Colin Firth's character. Now I'm going to have a quick spoiler for the first movie. If you did not see Kingsman The Secret Service, tune out for about 10 seconds. Uh, Colin Firth's character obviously died in the first movie, and we do see him back in the trailer um, for a quick second. I like the tease. Colin Firth's name is on the poster, so it's not a huge spoiler that we see him in there, but... I like that we just see him shaving for a minute. I think that's a, a quick uh, little tease that um, keeps me intrigued. And, um, you know, I just think that this movie's going to be even crazier than the first one. We see that guy with the bionic arm, and we see, obviously, um, the Kingsman building destroyed. So, uh, you know, Eggsy's going to be... Eggsy and Mark Strong's character are going to be on their own. Uh, maybe not have uh, as many resources as they would have had in the first film. So I really think that this could be an exciting um, and worthy sequel to Kingsman, uh, the first one, which was one of the most badass uh, action movies we've gotten in the past decade. So I can't wait for Kingsman, The Golden Circle. comes out this October. Um, next piece of news we have Lucasfilm releasing uh, their... Lucasfilm announcing uh, release dates for Star Wars Episode Nine. Uh, we have May 24th, 2019. So this is actually, um, they're moving it forward, really, because we were expecting it to come out in December. Now, this is actually a, a surprise to me. I would have thought since the complications with Carrie Fisher, them having to go back to the writing room, I would have thought, if anything, it would have gotten pushed uh, back. But they're actually moving it forward to May, um, so Star Wars back in summer. Um, I think that this is an interesting move because Star Wars obviously broke box office records in December, and it seems like December was a pretty good place for Star Wars. Uh, but maybe if they see this as the uh, conclusion of 
Luke and Leia's story, then, you know, it's it's just um, paying homage to the original trilogy, uh, moving it back to May, where Star Wars used to be. So I am excited to see a Star Wars movie in the summer, and it means that there's going to be less of a wait time between Han Solo and um, Episode Nine. So that's exciting news. And uh, Star Lucasfilm, excuse me, also announced uh, Indiana Jones 5, uh, currently untitled, uh, the fifth movie, has been pushed back to July 10th, 2020. So um, it was originally going to be in July of 2019. And why do I think it's been moved uh, a year ahead? Probably because I think Spielberg has been um, working on other projects. Uh, there's that movie that he's supposed to direct with Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep um, that he hadn't been working on before when they announced Indiana Jones 5, so I'm assuming he was busy making that movie, so they had to push back production, but Indiana Jones 5 will bring back Spielberg, and it will bring back Harrison Ford, so hopefully they get this one right, because they did not get Kingdom of the Crystal Skull right. And the last piece of news, uh, Jeff Goldblum has been added to the cast of Jurassic World 2. So this is um, this is news that really I don't care too much about because while I do really like uh, Jeff Goldblum in the original Jurassic Park, I think he's one of my favorite parts of that movie. Um, he's also in The Lost World, um, which wasn't great, and he just came back to the Independence Day franchise and didn't do anything good with that. It was actually terrible. So... You know, hopefully uh, they'll have some good ties back to the first movie with Jeff Goldblum's character coming back, but I don't think he can elevate it too much. Um, you know, hopefully this just means that they have an interesting story and a good way to incorporate him into the story. He is a good actor, so if they're going to use him well, um, that's that's good news, I guess, but it doesn't get me too much, too much more excited than I was. Uh, Hopefully Jurassic World 2 is better than Jurassic World, which I thought was just an average um, sci-fi movie. Uh, so that's all of the uh, movie news. Now we're, we're going to move into our main discussion of spoof movies. Um, we don't really get a lot of good spoof movies these days, but there are a lot of uh, great classic spoof movies. Some of the better classic comedies were spoofs uh, or parodies of other movies. So the first uh, film I'm going to talk about is the reason we're doing this. Uh, it's going to Blu-ray. We have Airplane. So Airplane uh, is just funny from the very beginning. Uh, the plane is moving back and forth through the clouds. You can just see the top of it, and the Jaws music is playing. Just completely ridiculous, but laugh-out-loud humor. And uh, Airplane might have the most jokes per minute of any comedy I've seen. I mean, they're, they just have joke after joke, and so many running gags. Uh, one of my favorite moments, um, this lady's freaking out because there's turbulence or because, because, um, it's, I think it's before the actual conflict happens, but something's gone wrong on the plane. This lady's freaking out and people just line up to shake her, slap her, say, get a hold of yourself. And then, you know, there's just a, a huge line of people with all these weapons to hit her with, to tell her to get a hold of herself. There's like an old lady with a gun. So it's, it's just stupid humor, but it, it's just funny, um, and, and we don't see those kind of jokes in movies anymore, at least not done right. Um, and then another really funny moment uh, is when um, the, the flight attendant has to blow up the doll that's the autopilot, and it looks like she's giving him head when, uh, when she's blowing up the doll, and Leslie Nielsen walks in. It, it's, just, it's just funny. I mean, you can't come up with that stuff. Um, and, and you don't see that anymore. Um, but, you know, obviously because there are so many jokes, uh, some of them fall flat um, just because there's so many. But uh, you're still entertained for the whole movie just because of the ridiculous nature of everything happening. And the humor's really increased because of the way the ridiculous lines are said. Because they're said by uh, these men who take everything so seriously. They just have a stone-cold delivery of the most ridiculous lines, so it really adds to the comedy, and I think they, they did a good job picking the cast of all these uh, serious men in such a ridiculous situation. And, um, you know, I mentioned there's a few running gags. There's a guy who says, uh, I picked the wrong week to quit smoking, and then later on, picked the wrong week to get, 
quit drinking and then later on I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines and he starts he does all these things as he says it and by the end he's just like passed out um, so that's a funny running gag and then uh, I think another probably funnier running gag is um, there's a few uh, black guys on the on the plane who talk in slang and no one can understand them and uh, they have subtitles to translate what they're saying and uh, just for example one of the guys goes shit at one time and then the subtitle says golly so uh, it's it's just hilarious uh, one of the funniest comedies uh, that's ever been made Leslie Nielsen is just hilarious one of the guys who takes everything seriously uh, you know uh, he takes all the lines literally, so there's the famous line, someone says, Shirley, you can't be serious, replies, I am serious, and don't call me Shirley, and just the stone-cold delivery just increases the humor, and, um, you know, that, like I said, they just can't get these movies right anymore, but Airplane might be the best slapstick comedy, maybe the best spoof movie ever made, definitely, if you haven't seen it, uh, check it out, I think anyone can enjoy it, um, the next spoof movie I'm going to talk about is Blazing Saddles. Uh, so this is a Mel Brooks film, and it's a great western parody uh, that breaks the fourth wall a lot. Uh, Cleavon Little plays the main character. Um, he's a a black man who's uh, who is the sheriff of the town. He becomes the sheriff because the attorney general wants to uh, get the people to move off the town. So. They appoint a black sheriff, assuming they'll all hate him or try to kill him, and then with no sheriff, then they can raid the town and have everyone move off so they can build a, a railroad there. But Cleavon Little uh, just gives an incredible uh, comedic performance, and he's great at turning the racism of the other characters into comedic moments, because obviously it's horrible the way that he's treated, but he just turns everything into something funny, uh, whether it's when he first shows up and they're they're pointing guns at him and he points the gun at himself and tricks them into into thinking that he's going to shoot himself if they don't put their guns down and he's just like oh i am so smart and they are so dumb and it's more more dumb humor but i mean it's it's just hilarious anyone anyone would laugh at the f at the jokes that Cleavon little throws in and uh mel brooks uh the director He's only on screen for about 15 minutes in the film, but every time he's on screen, he's doing something funny. You can just look at him and laugh. Um, just his mannerisms are so funny. And uh, favorite moment, gotta be Mel Brooks is meeting with the Attorney General um, and with Cleavon Little before when the Attorney General comes to him and says he wants to appoint uh, Cleavon Little as the sheriff. And he grabs Cleavon Little aside, thinking it's the Attorney General, and says... Uh, are you crazy? Can't you see that man is a nit? And then he looks at him. He's like, oh, sorry, wrong person. And it, I mean, it's just, he would never grab the wrong person, but it, Mel Brooks's delivery of the line is so funny. And, um, and then he grabs, he went, goes back and grabs, um, uh, the attorney general and he think he's going to finish the line, but he just says, can't you see that man is a nit? And, and that's it. Um, so it's just stupid, but hysterical. And, um, Another uh, another funny uh, dumb piece of dumb humor in there. Uh, a man's getting hung while he's on his horse, and there's a noose around the horse's neck too. So they hang both of them. Um, just why? I don't know why, but it's hilarious. Um, and it makes fun of uh, like typical Western gunslinger who's like too fast for anyone to beat because. Gene Wilder um, is like really skilled at shooting and there's a scene where he like shoots five guns out of guys hands in like the blink of an eye um, and they show how ridiculous that is but really in a lot of westerns there is a guy like that who's just like unrealistically skilled almost superhuman like uh, so they show how you know a lot of westerns have these characters that can't actually be that good so it, it makes humor out of that. And then, um, in the end, it breaks the fourth wall a lot, and the camera zooms out and shows the set in the middle of the Burbank Studios, and then the movie spills out into the rest of the studio with characters from the movie, uh, coming into contact with people who aren't in the movie, um, and it, it's, it makes for great, uh, great humor. 
um, which Mel Brooks has done that in some other films too, uh, Fourth Wall Breaking. So Blazing Saddles uh, on Netflix, so if you haven't seen it, definitely recommend everyone check that out um, as soon as you get a chance. Uh, next spoof movie I'm going to discuss is Hot Fuzz. Um, Hot Fuzz might be my favorite modern comedy, probably is. Uh, it's a parody of mystery films, but it's also a great mystery film in its own right. Um, and it follows Simon Pegg's character, who's this tough-as-nails police officer from London who gets moved to a small town uh, that's won, like, town of the year or vi village of the year for, like, ten years in a row. Like, no violent crime or anything. And uh, he's he, he doesn't uh, like this move because he likes to be close to the action. Um, and he gets paired up with uh, Nick Frost, uh, who plays this bumbling... Uh, kind of idiot who's his new partner, um, and people start dying in the town from what seems like freak accidents, but Simon Pegg is convinced that um, there's some kind of conspiracy, um, and it, it does have a very particular kind of humor, um, I, I sometimes refer to it as British humor, um, I really enjoy it, I find it delightful, but it, it isn't for everybody, um, so I'd, I'd recommend checking it out, but not everyone's going to enjoy it, but um, it's, there's great humor that comes out of um, a lot of the secondary characters who are like uh, the prominent figures in the town, and they're really parodies of these characters that we see in other mysteries and in um, in other like procedural TV shows. Like the people they interview are just caricatures of these uh, types that we see in normal in other mysteries. And, um, you know, it's it's a good comedy, but uh, you also do grow to care about the characters, um, and you see the friendship develop between Simon Pegg and Nick Frost throughout the movie. Uh, Simon Pegg, at the beginning, has no respect for Nick Frost, just sees him as this idiot, and then they become good friends uh, by the end. And uh, I mentioned that these deaths happen. Uh, the deaths are very ridiculous and amusing. I don't want to give any of those away, but there are some very funny deaths. And then... Uh, it ends with this awesome action sequence, um, and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of funny moments in the action sequence, and then there's also a lot of intense moments, and it's just really unique action, uh, set pieces, um, within a comedy, so it, it, it has a lot of elements, um, and it's just a very enjoyable, fun movie that will just keep you laughing and keep you, um, intrigued as to what's, what's going on in the, uh, in the conspiracy, so I definitely recommend uh, Hot Fuzz. Next movie is Galaxy Quest. Um, Galaxy Quest is a parody of Star Trek. Um, it follows the former cast of a sci-fi show uh, like Star Trek, and they're thrown into an actual intergalactic conflict, um, and like the aliens that uh, grabbed them out of their world believe that they are actually their characters from the TV show and not actors. Like, they don't get the that it's a show, they think that it's a real thing. Um, and Tim Allen plays sort of the William Shatner character, does a great job playing the douchey captain. Um, and the cast all has great chemistry with each other. I think it, Alan Rickman is at his funniest in this uh, in this film. He does a lot of drama, but Alan Rickman is very funny in the movie because um, he's sort of trying to escape the uh, the persona that people know him of as as his character. Um, but he can't get away from that. Everyone just associates him with the character from the show, uh, which a lot of people, I'm sure, go through. Uh, a lot of people with all these fan conventions just want to get away from it if they've been, if they were on an old Star Trek show or something. So uh, it's it's a very uh, funny parody of, of um, what those people might go through, and uh, it is a comedy, but it also has a lot of cool uh, science fiction elements and some good action scenes. Uh, there's cool designs for uh, a lot of the aliens and good costumes, and just a lot of the humor comes from the aliens who do abduct them, who believe that these are their heroes, and um, just the, the mannerisms of the aliens are very comedic. So Galaxy Quest, a uh, very entertaining, funny film. Definitely recommend that, um, as I've said with all of these films. Uh, these are a lot of great comedies that you should check out if you haven't seen. Uh, next movie, Hot Shots. Um, Hot Shots is a spoof of Top Gun. Uh, stars Charlie Sheen and Carrie Elwes. I don't know if I said his name right. Um, but 
it's from the same guy who made Airplane, so of course a lot of dumb humor, but uh, it, a lot of it lands. Um, the best scene, I don't want to ruin it for anyone, I'll just brief description. It's a sex montage, but it's not like an R-rated sex scene or anything. It's um, There's a lot of foreplay that goes on uh, involving food, so that's all I'll say uh, without spoiling anything. It gets very ridiculous and very funny. Um, I don't want to ruin that, but... That, that's definitely the funniest scene in the movie. Um, and then more just dumb humor, like uh, there's an Indian chief who, when they go to consult with him, uh, he gives them a wooden bong to take a hit from, and the bong has a balloon on the end, and they're, they're taking a hit of helium. Um, and so obviously just ridiculous humor there. And then uh, when they're actually fighting the enemy pilots, um, the enemy pilots have names, uh, that are named after Greek foods. Uh, there's a pilot named Pita and Baklava. Um, just, like, again, why? Uh, but it's still funny just because it's it's just dumb. Um, and then Carrie always does a great parody of Val Kilmer's character, Iceman, um, because he, he's sort of the guy who butts heads with Charlie Sheen throughout the movie. Um, so that's very funny. Um, he, he does a great parody of that, and... Um, has good comedic timing, um, so definitely recommend um, Hot Shots. Has it has uh, one of the same guys who plays the straightforward guys from uh, Airplane, who's like um, in charge of all the pilots, and he he's very literal in this film. Also, uh, you know, there's a funeral scene where guns go off, and he thinks that there's a conflict, and draws his weapon and starts shooting because um, he just takes everything literally. So. Uh, a lot of humor comes out of that as well. Um, so Hot Shots is a very funny uh, parody of Top Gun. And the last uh, spoof movie I'm going to discuss today is Spaceballs. Um, I'd assume everyone listening has probably seen Spaceballs, but uh, it makes fun of Star Wars, but at the same time pays a lot of respect to Star Wars. Um, the best bit, I'd say, is got to be the merchandising sequence uh, because of how true that is, you know. He, Mel Brooks talks about um, Star or, or sorry, Spaceballs the T-shirt, Spaceballs the breakfast cereal, and um, it's crazy to see how real that is a representation of Star Wars merchandising and how how Star Wars merchandising has gone even farther than that with you know Star Wars oranges, Star Wars water bottles. It's on everything for no reason other than to promote Star Wars and because people will buy it. Um, so that that's a really funny gag in there. And uh, so many memorable quotes. Obviously the, the most memorable, uh, I am your father's brother's nephew's cousin's former roommate. Um, that is just one of, the, one of the greatest comedic lines in any comedy. Uh, and it's, it's delivered perfectly by Rick Moranis, who does an excellent, excellent performance as Dark Helmet. Um, it's a shame that Rick Moranis isn't acting anymore. He's one of the, one of the great comedic actors of that time. Um, and, you know, this film also breaks the fourth wall when they start watching Spaceballs and it, like, lines up with where they are in the movie and they're just watching themselves, wondering what's going on. Um, a lot of great comedic moments. Um, you know, every, everything they do to parody Star Wars with Barf instead of Chewie and the Schwartz instead of the Force, it, it all works. Um, it's, it's just a great parody of Star Wars in every way and, uh, it's entertaining from the very beginning when you just watch the ship go by uh, for like a solid three minutes. Um, it, it's just ridiculous and you can't stop laughing. So I love Spaceballs um, and I think that it's probably one of my favorite parodies. Um, so that's all we have on today's episode. I want to thank everyone who is listening today and... Uh, Next week we will uh, be discussing the best movies of Tom Hanks, so be sure to uh, come back next week at 8 o'clock on Wednesday for that episode. And uh, if you're listening, uh, be sure to give this video a like and leave a comment in the description. Let us know what's your favorite parodies. Uh, so thank you for listening, and until next week, I am serious, and don't call me Shirley.